Houston, this is awesome. You know, I've been saying for a while that LEGO is getting really, really good with their big models. The newest LEGO NASA 10283 Special Discovery along with the Hubble Space Telescope model are the greatest example as of late of how far LEGO has come when it comes to creator true expert vehicles and models. They're not really called creator expert anymore, but this thing has this expert tag to it very strongly emphasized in this model. So without further ado, Let's dive into the review. Wow, Mike, that was deep. You can now become a news anchor. 2,354 pieces. And I think in this specific case, the Black Adult 18 Plus box looks really good because we do have the vastness of space behind the shuttle as a background. We also have the Space Shuttle Program logo in the corner and the NASA Special Discovery logo in the upper corner. The back of the box shows one of the ways you can display the shuttle along with the Hubble telescope. We have the dimensions and also, of course, the shots showcasing the features of the set and some real life shots of both the Hubble in space. And on this side, there is the shot of Discovery right after launch. The manual, as expected, provides you with tons of historical information about the Space Shuttle program. And what I noticed the most about this is, I think, the first official mention of SpaceX as the company that follows the legacy of the human spaceflight on space shuttles. Uh, and we can see the Dragon with the crew capsule on top of it. This is, I think, the first official mention of SpaceX in a LEGO set, because right now SpaceX works closely with NASA. They just won the lunar landing uh, contract for almost $3 billion for the Artemis mission. The human landing craft will be done by SpaceX. But this is the first time I'm seeing SpaceX mentioned in a NASA in a LEGO set, uh, thanks to NASA, and maybe hopefully that's gonna finally bring us some SpaceX, um, you know, um, legacy to the LEGO uh, system in the future. I do hope for that. Also, the manual feels like a history lesson, like a museum tour, because throughout the pages, as you build pieces of the set, you will find bits of information, fun facts about the operation um, of the shuttle and little tidbits of just historical information, so that's pretty cool. The two plaques offer plenty of information. You can pause here if you want to read through that, but it's nice that we actually get two of these. Again, I would say that the Space Hubble can totally be a standalone set, given the fact how many pieces it offers and how awesome of a model it is. Hubble Telescope was launched in 1990, and fun fact, it was launched by Discovery, but it was launched with a defective mirror. It had a spherical aberration, and uh, only the 1993 service mission fixed that problem. And now we see the images of the Hubble telescope, mostly thanks to that. In the first place, they were very blurry and it was a very costly mistake by NASA. It's a very interesting read, actually, uh, look it up. I'm gonna take the Hubble off the stand. You can just see how it's assembled. So be careful not to capture by the top of the Hubble because it's gonna disconnect very easily. Those only two Technic pieces are holding it together and those are the modified one by ones to just go into those slots just like that, but it doesn't really hold, uh, hold it tight. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna put it on the table. And yes, I get you guys, the Hubble looks totally like a lightsaber hilt. It can be totally zoom, like a lightsaber, absolutely. Uh, this is the most silver pieces you are getting in a single Lego set ever, uh, which is amazing. I guess that's uh, one of the big reasons that a lot of people will buy this set. Once you forget that lightsaber feel, it does look like Hubble in real life. Very accurate, all the details are there. Some simple assemblies, uh, mostly for the spherical uh, shape of it but also some details like here and here for the service hatch and all that stuff. We have communication antennas and solar arrays that are actually this printed uh, plastic, printed sails, if you will, that LEGO does sometimes. Uh, it's because the real uh, Hubble solar arrays were folded um, before deploying to the orbit and they unfolded and look as we know like that today. They are kind of customizable. You can adjust the shape here. We also have this mirror of the Hubble again, uh, initially defective, but now fixed. So really interesting story. Look that up. I had a blast reading through it. I didn't even know that it cost so much money to deploy the Hubble and they had initial crazy problems with uh, the picture quality. And uh, it was really almost like a, like a flop of a mission. So really interesting story there. And also a quick look at the back to show you what's up. Really good silver look. Of course, I like the fact that we get tons of those slopes in silver and this gives Hubble justice. Why did, we, did not we have this when, for example, the Harley Davidson was coming out? I have no idea, 
but Hubble saves the day and comes in full silver. Notable piece on the Hubble is the classic old NASA WARM logo and the ESA, European Space Agency logo on a custom printed silver piece. And you can also access the service panel like right here, or I think that's probably one of the equipment pieces they uh, replaced to fix that mirror problem, but it's also recreated in the set, which is super, super accurate to the historical thing. In fact, the Hubble is so good that many people, including myself, were calling for this to maybe become even a standalone set for like $40, $50. It takes a while to build, it's plenty of pieces, like takes you an hour or, or more in the beginning of the build, and uh, right now we have it locked into this exclusive giant beautiful uh, Discovery shuttle. Discovery is glorious, I don't think I have to repeat that. Uh, she flown 39 service missions, she launched the Hubble, and then conducted two service missions afterwards. And right now you can see the real Discovery Shuttle in the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum in the US. I like how simple the stand is, just those two uh, things slot into the uh, bottom of the shuttle. Let me see if I can show it. Um, there it is, right on. And uh, just shows you where which way is forward. You can actually do it this way if you want to, but once the shuttle is on, easy, boom slot in and it stands beautifully so it's super easy i'm glad there is no technique involved and it just uh, is securely placed by its own weight the shape is very accurate you can superimpose the shuttle on the real pictures of discovery it's gonna be like one to one perfect shaping the thing that's of course missing is the lack of the external boosters that are reusable that were reusable and the external fuel tank that's that makes the full shuttle launch system what we're seeing here is just the orbiter so I can see mock people already thinking how they can deploy uh, the tanks and, and the boosters to make this the complete uh, space shuttle system look. I really wanna do the quick overview of the functions before we even go any further, but just gonna take it off the stand once more. The main functions that everybody would gonna absolutely love is this. Deployment of the landing gear one way only, as in the real thing. So that way you can totally display the shuttle on its uh, landing gear very accurately. And you can also see that the front landing gear and the rear landing gear have different height. So the shuttle does uh, lean forward just like the real thing and it gives you this uh, super cool accurate look to the real thing. In the rear, once more a look at that landing flap that uh, used, is used to engage the gear. Just push it forward and it's all like a spring-loaded system inside. So once you get the, the gear going, you just put it back in manually just like that and one more click boom deployed so it works pretty smoothly just you have to be careful to have the shuttle facing down so it doesn't get stuck on anything it, it does happen sometimes i gotta say that the upper engine controls the tailerons for flight control and we also have a function for the air brake that also serves as a rudder which is the real thing that's how it worked air brake this form rudder uh, like this so it's uh it flew like a tailless plane with delta wing setup so remember that it was always gliding back to Earth with no power needed. We also have the removable cockpit, so let's take a quick look on that. This is where the new pieces also appear. We have the windshield as a new piece with a print on it, and also those corner elements are new to this shuttle, specifically made for this. We have print for the cupolas at the top, so that's also a really nice addition. And if you look inside, we do have the new elements uh, printed consoles on the cheese piece, First time ever, this set and the Looney Tunes minifix is where the cheese piece receives a print. Uh, four uh, seats for the astronauts, and there's also the lower deck in the shuttle. And this location features more prints on those cheese pieces. The airlock that is used for the astronauts to enter the unpressurized cargo bay. One more seat for the fifth astronaut, and a small console uh, to go along with that. And just some final remarks on the looks. Many people may not like the nose. It's completely brick built, so I do appreciate it. It certainly looks like Lego, which rest of the models might not because of the lack of studs. So the studs are, the studs are very selective and the designers went for the fact to, uh, that the shell is a very displayable model and they want to keep it studless. But the nose cone definitely gives you this Lego look, which is, I mean, in my opinion, great. Uh, the RCS thrusters are also visible. Those are the vacuum thrusters that are controlling and helping navigate the shuttle in the vacuum of space. So they are visible, you know, those holes in the nose cone and all this stuff. They could have maybe molded some extra uh, additional pieces to make it even more accurate, uh, but still I think it's pretty solid. People will also say that there is nothing on the underside, but you know what? 
The rear shuttle had uh, thousands of heat resistant tiles and I think the undersides of the of Lego bricks are kind of looking that way so I don't mind having not much of a smoothness here but however they did the surfaces for entry uh, like the the entry uh, surfaces that are dissipating heat because of the shape really really well inverted um, uh, curves here are working nicely and they work together with the uh, underside of the bricks very nicely so you can see also the wedge use here and the significant lack of gaps even though the shaping is very unusual the prints and stickers kind of work together we have the prints for the nasa warm logo and the discovery name with the united states inverted flag on this side remember the stars are always to the front so that's why they had to print inverted flag on this side of the shuttle the nasa is a sticker which kind of stands out because the stickers in white always kind of uh, so you, you see the edge, the, the, the color of the white is kind of a bit off always. And same goes for the Discovery sticker in the front. It does stand out a bit, but I don't mind too much since the largest stickers are, uh, sorry, the largest elements uh, are actual prints. And on this side, we have the USA flag and also the United States printed on a brick, plus that NASA logo once more. And yet again, you can see those RCS thrusters and the engine assembly in the back showcasing the detail work of the shuttle also the um, additional engines in the back everything is portrayed as the way just the way it should be and just to finalize you can also appreciate the structure of the shuttle by kind of moving the engines the parts of the engines in the back so you can see the assembly for the uh, vertical stabilizer um, connection and it's pretty clever here you can also see parts of the mechanism there so definitely keep that in mind once you build the shuttle you're going to really appreciate the way they did things inside Ah, the bay door. The glorious yet very frustrating piece of the build. Uh, you can probably tell why. See those silver stickers? This is how many you're getting in this set. There is extra silver sticker material if you want to use it for mocks, so that's pretty nice. Thank you, Lego. But those uh, panels take good 30 to 40 to 50 minutes uh, to assemble. I did it on a live stream. I had a technique figured out, so that was quite nice. But Quick note of advice, if you want to build this set, I would say start off with those stickers, apply them to the uh, to the reflective panels of the bay door, because you're going to save yourself a lot of frustration. You do this in the middle of the build, it's not very pleasant, I gotta say. And those pieces, by the way, those are also new pieces to this set, never before seen in LEGO. Application inside of these is a bit tricky, so once you do it in the beginning, go for it. Those pieces come in a separate bag, so it's easy to, to do it without opening any of the numbered bags. I highly recommend doing so. You will save yourself a lot of frustration and you will not get knocked out of the building zone once you get to that point. So uh, really, really do it. I highly recommend it. As you can tell, I have something that doesn't belong here. Those are the folded Hubble panels, so you kind of attach them in place of those giant solar arrays. Once you get to displaying the Hubble inside the shuttle bay, uh, but these are kind of like the representation of this being uh, folded. Inside the bay, there are a few notable things. We have the cameras that the crew used to monitor the cargo. There are three in the bay. There is one also here on this side, and there is one on the Canada arm, uh, which is used to manipulate the cargo. There is the American flag. Let's take the Canada arm out, so it just goes like that. It's kind of, you can modify it to, to use it for um, getting the um, either the Hubble on display piece or just, you know, that's how they did it to uh, use the cargo and deploy it in space uh, while controlling this from the cabin. And on this side we have the Q-band antenna, which can be also kind of adjusted. Usually it was sticking out like this outside of the shuttle to face either the ISS or the Earth. This was used for communication with the either Houston control center or the NASA control centers or the crew on the ISS. And one more look how it actually looks like deployed and it's the most accurate depiction of what it looked like on the real shuttle. This lightsaber is the modified Hubble that is prepared for display with the shuttle. You also get this piece together with the set to basically work with Hubble. So we just attach it uh, just like that right there. You have to get those elements out, which are important for the displayability. You place this element in the provided slot inside the cargo bay. You place the Hubble telescope right on top of it. Make sure the stats do catch the, the whole thing. And you use one of those hooks to place them inside one of those assemblies for the Hubble display and attach Canada arm to it. So that way you can simulate 
the operation on the orbit. And that's basically how it looks like in one of those display options. So you can once more have a Hubble on display separately, you can have the space shuttle on display alone, you can have the space shuttle on the landing gear, or space shuttle on the stand together with Hubble working its uh, thing uh, on the in the space orbit. The telescope does fit inside the cargo bay. You just have to remove all the solar panels that you can, even the folded ones, because there is no space for that. But once that's in place, you can technically lock the Canada arm next to it, just like that. And you should be able to close the bay uh, without... Oh, I forgot about the antenna, so you gotta fold that as well, kind of try to hide it inside, and then you close it off. So that's why they designed those pieces, because of the design, they are offering a lot of space inside. They are very thin, very well molded, so that way they can fit a circular object like this, a cylindrical object like this, like the Hubble, and close off without sacrificing too much space. So that's pretty good, LEGO. And you know what? I want, just want to do a closing remark of appreciation for what LEGO is doing with NASA Legacy. The ISS set from LEGO Ideas is not in the picture, it's still my box after the move, but this is what I had in the studio, the Space Shuttle, the Saturn V rocket. This thing is absolutely glorious. And the uh, Apollo lander, the Eagle lander from Apollo 11. Wow. Uh, if we, I mean, what else is left there, right? Like, we have the shuttle, which is the the epitome of, of NASA technology and, and legacy and, and history, what else could be done? What's next? SpaceX, Dragon Cruise, Artemis, SLS, who knows? There is plenty of stuff to still do, but for now on, we have the amazing shuttle. And uh, let's say goodbyes and uh, go back to the studio. How do I even summarize this? What a set. Being a space nerd and a huge NASA and SpaceX geek boy, and now having this addition to the latest and greatest of NASA LEGO sets, all with modernized techniques and modernized pieces and the newest, almost studless uh, approach to the design, I can say that this is a must-have for many. Not only even the space fans, anybody that has some sort of like a hype towards the legacy of the space shuttle and human space exploration in general and what SpaceX is doing right now and NASA with their Artemis program and all this stuff, having this in LEGO form is amazing. Because not only it, do, it does offer a great building experience, but also it from afar it can be totally placed alongside other space shuttle models you might or may not have in your collection. If you do not have uh, any space shuttles in your collection, get this one, because not only it's awesome LEGO set, but it's also gonna serve well, even together with the Hubble, which can be, again, a fantastic standalone set on its own. They will both serve amazing for your display, and for always coming back and remembering the legacy of these amazing missions, missions and the craziest, one of the craziest engineering programs in the humankind history as of today. All right, let me know what you think about this review. Of course, the comment section is open below. You can leave your comments there. Leave a like, hit the like for the YouTube algorithm. Just destroy, make it turn blue. And that's going to really help my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. It was Mike. And I'll see you in the next one here on The Cool Factor. Peace out. Bye.